why I always feel like I have cat hair on me. Oh, because I do. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Good to have you here. And also happy New Year's. It's New Year's Day and oh, more cat hair. It's been a while since I've done a video. I am really excited about this one because since it's been a while since I've done a video, I haven't done a what I eat in a day video in a really long time. And they always tend to be one of my most watched here on YouTube. You guys seem to really enjoy them. So very excited about this particular one. Um, I ended up making something that I make for myself all the time for dinner, which is spaghetti squash. But the way I made it on this particular evening, like completely outdid my expectations. It was really, really good. And I'm very excited to share it with you guys because I want you guys to give it a go and tell me blah, blah, tell me how you guys like it. All right, so with that being said, I don't want to go on for too long. I just want to hop into the kitchen and share with you how I made everything that I did on this day for this What I Eat in a Day video. All right, guys, see you in there. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I have a hard time eating in the morning, but still want to get something good for me in. So on this morning before I went to work out, I decided I wanted a green juice instead of like a solid breakfast. That sounded pretty good to me, but the problem is I don't have have a juicer, but I do know this neat little trick to get around this. I took out my blender and just started throwing some fruit and veggies into it. I threw some cucumbers in it, some celery, some green apples, some lemon juice, and some spinach. You could throw some parsley, some romaine lettuce, watercress, or whatever you want into this, but these are some of the fruits and veggies that I had, so I went with that. I also decided to add a little bit of monk fruit sweetener into this juice, but it's optional. Just so you guys know, monk fruit is a type of natural sweetener that's calorie free, kind of like stevia. Then I added in about two cups of water and blended that all up. Then once it was well blended, I saw that it was super thick because of all of the veggie and fruit fiber. So I grabbed a to-go drink container and a sieve and just poured the blender mixture through the sieve to catch and strain out the pulpy fibers. You can leave it like this, but the fiber is actually good for digestion, so I added in a little tiny bit of it back into the juice to pump up the nutrition value. A little while later, I was starting to get hungry, and so I decided to make some Asian-style lettuce wraps for lunch. To make these, I used a couple handfuls of shiitake mushrooms and diced them up. I wanted to make enough to have leftovers for the next day, so I cut up quite a few, maybe around 15. And I'd say I was done when I had about three cups of diced mushrooms. I set those aside and opened up two cans of sliced water chestnuts. I want this all to fit well into lettuce wraps, so I drained these water chestnuts and diced them up a tad bit smaller. Also, I'd like to mention that I usually add diced baked to blah, blah, baked to I can't say it baked firm tofu. Holy crap! To the mixture, um, but I totally forgot to pick it up at the store. But just so you know, it's really good, very filling, and very high protein if you want to throw that in as well. Okay, once that was done, I tossed my mushrooms and water chestnuts into a big pan and drizzled a little bit of soy aminos over it, along with a few tablespoons of water. Once everything started to steam and cook up for about five minutes, I added in three ingredients for the sauce. A drizzle of hoisin sauce, some sriracha, and a big spoonful of crunchy peanut butter. I stirred that around, and if the peanut butter is too thick, it's okay. Just add a tiny bit more water, stir it up, and it'll all blend together nicely. Last but not least, I sprinkled in some sesame seeds for texture, and stirred it around, and that was it. Then I just served it up into a small bowl and put all the extra into a to-go container for the next day for lunch. I garnished my plate with some more sesame seeds and to wrap this mixture up into a wrap, I prefer to use butter lettuce rather than like iceberg and it's because it has a nice light and flexible texture which is perfect for these guys. A little more sriracha and these were ready to eat. I just spooned a little of the mixture into a lettuce leaf and wrapped it up just like that. These are so great and so simple to make, and I think I make these at least once a week. Feel free to add in some zucchini, like I said earlier, some firmly baked tofu, some onions, bamboo shoots, carrots, baby corn, really anything you want. They are just so flipping good. Okay, for a snack later on in the day when I was feeling kind of hungry but not quite ready for dinner, I've been loving these sort of, like, I don't even know what to call them, pickled cucumber salad things that I've been making. And like I said, I really don't know what to call them because they're not exactly pickles, but dang, they're good. 
For these, I used an English cucumber, which has a thinner rind than a regular cucumber, and I like it better because it's just a lighter, crisper texture. A few limes, I think that there's about six here. About five cloves of garlic, some soy sauce or liquid soy aminos, a little sugar, some peanuts, which you can omit if you're allergic or don't like peanuts, and finally, onion powder and chili powder. Okay, so this is super duper easy to do. I started by finely slicing my cucumbers as thin as I could. Um, I feel like the finer they get sliced, the quicker and better they get soaked with the dressing, and my impatient ass cannot wait to eat things, as you can see here with me eating all of my ingredients. Okay, so slice, 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 chop, chop, chop. So once my cucumber was sliced, I put it all into a dish and started chopping up my garlic cloves. Okay, into the dish those cloves go. I think I used about four to six, and then I added in a little sprinkle of onion powder. Then goes in about a tablespoon of sugar and about a tablespoon or so of soy aminos. Then for the lime, I think I juiced in total four or five limes into the dish for the dressing, and then I gave that a quick little stir to dissolve the sugar. While I waited for the sugar to dissolve a little more, I Instagrammed and added this to my story, which I often do share some of my recipes on my Instagram story, so make sure to check that out and follow it. And then I just poured the dressing right over top the cucumbers. I realized I wanted to coat them just a bit more, so I danced around a little bit to the music I was playing while I filmed this, and then juiced another lime right over the top. Do you guys also eat all of your ingredients as you're cooking? Because I definitely do. Finally, I chopped up my peanuts and threw those in there, which sounded really weird, but this is actually so good. I got the idea from the green papaya salad you get at like Thai food restaurants, which has that limey peanut dressing. Anyway, super, super dope. Gave that a stir and then I just popped that in the fridge for about an hour. When they came out, they were all pickled and crunchy and delicious in all the things. They are awesome to pick at throughout the day because they're just so dang snackable, snackable, snackable. I can't talk tonight, but they're very tasty and I love these. So if you give them a go, let me know. Anyway, love these. Okay, so for dinner, I made one of my absolute favorite, favorite things ever, which is spaghetti squash. And I make it many ways all the time, but you guys, I think I outdid myself this time. This is vegan cheesy spaghetti squash with roasted early girl tomatoes, artichoke hearts, in a lemony white wine, garlic, and thyme sauce. Yeah, holy fiddle diddle, guys. I cannot wait for you to try this one. It is so bomb. Okay, for this recipe, I started off by cutting the end off of one side of my spaghetti squash, standing that up and slicing it in half lengthwise. And somewhere along the lines, um, I look like I changed my jumper. I think that I might have spilled something on it or something earlier in the night. But anyway, I opened this baby up and when you open up a spaghetti squash, you'll notice a bunch of seeds and fiber and you just want to make sure to scoop that out before baking it. I used a spoon and if you would like to save the seeds, you can and just roast those up separately for like salads and things. And I usually end up saving the innards for squash and doing that later. But just so you know, don't throw away the seeds. You can actually roast those up and eat them. They're really good. Then I grabbed some parchment paper, which by the way, shout out to the most passive aggressive sounding brand name ever, am I right? Anyway, I laid the parchment down and then my squash is face down as well. And if you don't have parchment paper, that's totally fine. You can just lay your squash face down on a pan. But I just do this because it makes cleanup easier, like way easier. Anyway, so I threw my squashes in the oven on 350 for about 30 minutes and prepared my sauce by grabbing a couple extra ingredients. For the sauce, I got together some dry white wine. Here I'm using Sauvignon Blanc. Two lemons for the juice and rind. An entire bunch of garlic a jar of marinated artichoke hearts, about two cups of early girl tomatoes, which shout out are the juiciest, sweetest tomatoes ever, some sprigs of fresh thyme, some good old nutritional yeast, about a cup, another cup of raw cashews, and finally some garlic powder and salt and pepper. Okay, so garlic. I wanted an ass load of it for this sauce. I mean, I chopped up somewhere around a thousand cloves of garlic, and trust me, this is going to make the sauce taste incredible. So don't think that you're gonna go overboard on the garlic, chop up all of it. 
Okay, so chop, chop, chop. And then I took a bunch of time and ran my fingers over it to take out the stiff woody stem because it's just not pleasant to eat that part. I separated about two tablespoons of the thyme leaves from the stem, gave it a good rough chop, and then took a lemon and zested its rind. I zested the other one too, so two rinds, and then once I got enough zest, I cut them in half and juiced them. All right, so now that that was all prepped out, I set that aside and grabbed a small baking dish and lined it with another piece of parchment paper. Carefully, I destemmed and cut all of my beautiful early girl tomatoes in half and popped them into the lined baking dish to be roasted. And this just makes them super sweet and brings out all their juices. And oh my God, I'm salivating thinking about this. As I edit this video, they are so good. And those went into the oven for about 15 minutes to roast up. And then I began making the very essential vegan Parmesan. So I have shown you guys how to make this vegan Parmesan many, many times on my channel, but just to show you once again, I grabbed a blender container and threw in my cashews, my nutritional yeast, some garlic powder, and a little bit of salt. Now to blend this, I just pulsed it on a food processing setting and gave it a good couple shakes to break it up. If you blend it on a high setting, it can clump up, so just be careful about that. When I took it off the blender, it had the same consistency as real Parmesan cheese. Okay, so my next move apparently was to have a little white wine, but my next move after that was to take out a pan and put a tad bit of olive oil in it and then throw my chopped garlic in there to saute. Don't be scared of using too much garlic, I'm telling you, this is the flavor. Then I broke up my artichokes with my fingers right in the pan and then in went both the lemon zest and the lemon juice. Then about half a teaspoon of salt and pepper and about half a cup or so of the dry white wine. I let that cook off a little bit and then took out my beautiful roasted tomatoes and dropped those right inside the pan along with some fresh chopped thyme. The colors are just shapapin. Look at that. That looks so good. By that time, the spaghetti squash was also fork tender and done roasting, and you can tell it's done when the flesh of the squash can easily peel away into strand like noodles. I took my fork and carefully took out the squash from its rind and into a bowl, but just make sure you're extra careful for this step and let it cool off a little bit because it is so hot when it comes out of the oven. All right, right into my pan the squash went and I simply gave that a toss and added in a bunch of the vegan Parmesan. In hindsight, I really wish I added some toasted pine nuts as well. So maybe you guys can do that and let me know your thoughts on it. But I think that the texture would have been so good. I also thought that maybe some sun-dried tomatoes, mushrooms or shallots would be a great addition, but I was trying to go for keeping things more simple and on the cheaper end. So this is what I went with. Anyway, this dish, I'm telling you, was a total hit. I invited my friend over and we sat and drank wine and ate this and oops, out of frame, but holy moly, did we like this dinner. I even added some sriracha to mine, which made it spicy and delicious. Anyway guys, this is what I ate on this particular day. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you give any of these recipes a try, make sure to tag me on Instagram and let me know down below in the comments if you like them or if you added anything to them because I always love your guys' creativity in making these dishes your own. And with that being said, I gotta get out of here but I will see you all very, very soon on my next video.